Hey everyone, today we're going to be testing if the 5G signal from your cell phone is going to kill you or not. In order to test this, I finally got my hands on a 5G radiation detector. This is called the GQ EMF-390. I'll put a link to it in my description. GQ actually sponsored this video and sent me this device so that I can test out the electronics in my house. So I'm going to be testing the strength of radiation that comes from my cell phone, also my Wi-Fi in my house, and also the cell phone towers as well. So I'm going to be driving to some cell phone towers and testing how strong the radiation is at ground level. The term radiation in and of itself doesn't actually mean something is dangerous. Electromagnetic waves come in all different ranges. You can have radio waves which have extremely long wavelengths, all the way up to gamma arrays which have extremely short wavelengths. Usually the electromagnetic waves that we're worried about are the electromagnetic waves that have really short wavelengths because that means they have a lot of energy. And when they have really short wavelengths, we usually stop talking about them as waves altogether, but we usually talk about them as single particles. The reason we usually get scared when we hear the word radiation is because of another use of the word radiation that we have. And that's for just subatomic particles that are flying through space. We also call that radiation. For example, I have here a small little bit of uranium ore. It's radioactive. It's sending out alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles. Now gamma particles are actually just electromagnetic radiation, but they have extremely low wavelengths or extremely high frequencies. The type of radiation coming off of this uranium sample is dangerous in high amounts because the particles can hit your DNA and it can cause cancer later on or acute radiation sickness. And this type of radiation can be detected with a Geiger counter like this. For example, if I take my Geiger counter here, we can hear the radiation coming off of this. If I don't hold it near it, my microphone's right here, you can hear that every once in a while we get a few clicks. There's one. There's another. But now watch what happens when we bring it closer. <laughs> A lot of clicks. The type of radiation that you can detect with a Geiger counter is called ionizing radiation. So first let's just do a quick check and make sure there's no ionizing radiation coming off of our cell phone. So I'm using 5G right now, so let's see if we get an increase in beeps. So you get regular background radiation, bring my phone near it, no increase. So that's a good thing. There's no ionizing radiation coming off of our phone. We never really thought there was, but this is what we mean when we say dangerous radiation. It's ionizing radiation. But now let's see how much 5G radiation is coming off of our phones. Let's drive out to a 5G cell phone tower and measure it with my detector here and see how many milliwatts per meter squared we're getting. Okay, so I'm gonna be checking that cell tower here, walking up to it. It actually is detecting cell tower already. So down here on the ground, away from it, we're at seven milliwatts per meter squared. So it still says we're in normal range. So even being really close to these cell towers, doesn't seem like it's a big difference. Okay, when I get further away from it, it's actually worse as opposed to right under it. So right under it, it wasn't that high, but out here it's getting up to around 30. Clear over there. The highest I've gotten was around 31 milliwatts per meter squared, standing this far away from it. So standing right next to the self towers, it wasn't that high. Standing a little bit further back from them, it was a little bit high, but not much higher than just the standard electromagnetic waves that are always around you. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's test how strong the 5G signal is coming directly off of my phone. So comparable to when you're holding it next to your ear talking. So my phone is using my 5G network right now. Let's turn on our meter. So right now we're at around 0.4 milliwatts per meter squared jumping around. Let's bring my phone close to it now. Holy cow. 100, 327 it got to. Okay, that is a lot higher than the cell phone tower. Let's turn off my phone completely. 
800 it got to. 818. Whoa. Okay, it turned off. So you know that was coming from my phone right there. It's at 1.6, let's turn on my phone. So it's probably gonna use some signal here as it turns on. So it's always kind of sending out some signals and they don't come in continuous waveform. You can see they come in little packets on this graph down here. If we look at a different source like my wireless mic here, if I put this next to it, you can see how it's kind of just this constant on the graph there. You can see totally how this signal is coming from it. Look how it changes on the graph when I move it close and further away. But with your phone, the packets get sent out in little signals, so it's more choppy. See when I bring my phone near it, how it's these up and down signals? It's changing really fast the amount of signal that's being sent out. Move my phone away, it goes away, move it closer. Let's try making a FaceTime call. Whoa, 1089. So I'm making a FaceTime call to my other phone here and you can see how high it got, 1089. Turn it off, it drops right back down. Okay, I have my Google Wi-Fi right here. If I put it right next to Google Wi-Fi, I get in the 600s about. That's as high as it went. So this data is really interesting. The first takeaway from this is that we know that cell phone towers really aren't that big of a risk to you if you're worried about electromagnetic radiation. You're gonna get way more radiation coming from your phone next to your head than a cell phone tower that's way far away. The reason for this is simply because of the proximity. The cell phone towers put out a lot more power, but they're a lot further away than your cell phone, which is right next to you. But the question is, is it dangerous? The radiation coming from this is non-ionizing radiation, so it can't affect your DNA. But what it can affect is the water molecules or sugar molecules in your body. Normal cell phone signals and even your Wi-Fi signal is in the microwave range. So that means it's around the same frequency that your microwave actually uses to cook food. The only difference is your microwave uses a lot more power, and so it can actually heat up the food. So what's all the talk about 5G signals? Well, a 5G signal actually doesn't use electromagnetic waves that are in the microwave wavelength. They're actually in the millimeter wavelength. So they're a little bit shorter, a little bit higher power. But just because that wavelength is smaller doesn't necessarily mean it's more dangerous to your body. So really the only risk that your cell phone could cause you is causing your skin or your body to heat up a little bit. But really the amount that it could cause you to heat up is way less than the amount the screen actually heats up due to the battery inside of it. So you can actually feel your phone getting hot in your hand when you use it too much. Now so far there's been no adverse health effects that have been causally linked with wireless technologies, but there haven't been a lot of studies on 5G. The World Health Organization and others are currently doing studies on 5G technology that are expected to be published by around 2022. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell to be notified when I release my latest video. And check out The Action Lab Shorts where I make videos similar to this channel, but I do them in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.